Notch consists of seven main UI panels. Right in front of us here, we see five of them. Here in the top left corner, we see resources where all our external files are handled. Next to it, we have properties. Properties correspond with specific settings that we would set in one or the other node in the system. And here we have a viewport. So in the viewport, we build our designs. Actually, to see the viewport better, let's turn on the grid. So I'm going to press Alt G. A little bit lower here in the right corner, we have node list. And as you see, we have quite a few nodes to choose from. All of them are color coded and color coding corresponds with specific systems that these nodes work with. For instance, these are all deformers. And here we have a fast list of post effects. Right next to it, we have a node graph. This is exactly where we build all our designs using the very nodes that we have in the node list. We already have one node available for us in our node graph, and that's the root node. Root node holds the main rendering properties in Notch. So anything from deferred rendering to anti-aliasing to composite blend modes and alpha channels. Navigation is done with two buttons. So it's control for zoom and alt for pan. You can use middle mouse key for that as well. Let's come back to the node list and let's add a node to the scene. I'm typing shape 3D and I'm going to pull that from the list. Shape 3D contains quite a few shapes inside of it. So anything from sphere to a box to capsule, so on and so forth. As you see, node came in hashed out gray. That indicates that it's not connected or not rendering just yet. For us to render this node in a viewport, we have to connect it to the root node. And that is true to the majority of nodes in the system. Majority of them will have to be connected to the scene root or appropriate root for a specific system that the node corresponds to. We can delink the node from the root by pressing Ctrl Shift and hovering over the line. As soon as it becomes red, we can click on it and it will delete the link. We have a shortcut for connecting nodes to the root. That would be control R, R for the root. Now, as you see, this node came with three points of interest. On the top here, we have parenting that we just used. We have an output and we have input. Input is a variable, so there could be quite a few of them available for us from the get go. In this case, there's only one material. We have quite a few things visible for us from the get go, the grid, the range indicators, bounding boxes and handles. Be aware that you can turn them on and off in this mid panel. Every single node in Notch has a properties panel. Properties panel corresponds with different attributes and different settings that you can change in a node. In this case, we have a 3D object. We can move it in a 3D space. We can alter its appearance and we can make changes to its rendering properties. Let's talk a little bit about the panels in general. As you see, there is a range that is set by default. So it's from minus 10 to 10. We're not bound by this range. We can exceed it by either manually typing in the numeric value that we want or by holding Alt and dragging a little bit further outside of the given minus 10 to 10 value. If you want to change the value in a smaller increment, hold Ctrl and drag. We can reset the whole node to its default state by hitting the top rewind button and we can reset a specific parameter by hitting the bottom one. I think I'm going to set this shape 3D to a box and I'm going to make some rotation and positional alterations. You can build presets for every single node in Notch. All you have to do is press this plus key, give it a name and it will be available for you here in this dropdown. I'm going to reset the node and I'm going to apply the preset I just built. Now let's move on to the viewport and let's talk about navigation in the viewport. We have four ways that we can manipulate this model. So it's positions, rotations, scale and unified scale. We can access all four of these properties with shortcut E, R, T, Y. Navigation in viewport is done with a combination of three buttons, Control, Shift and Alt. Alt would pan, Control Alt would zoom in, Shift Alt pans on the X and Shift Alt with the right key pans on the Y axis. 
Let's rename this shape 3D. I'm going to right click on a node and I'm going to go for node settings. I'm going to call this a sphere. I'm going to bring it a little bit upwards. I'm going to grab a new shape 3D and connect it to the root. We have two shape 3Ds in the scene, but we only see one. The reason why we see only one is because both of these shapes are set to the same type, sphere, and they're positioned in the very same location. I'm going to offset the sphere a little bit further to the side. Now I'm going to come back to the shape 3D and I'm going to change this shape type to a box. Let's rename this node to a box. I can either right click and go for node settings or I can hit F5. If you want to run timeline in Notch, please press space. As soon as you start playhead in Notch, you will notice that there's a little change in the viewport. We don't see our handles anymore, and that's intentional. At some point, when you build a very, very big and complex design, it is very handy to clear your viewport from all the handles, all the bounding boxes while in play mode. Right, let's bring back our time marker to the zero position. We can do that by hitting home. Or if you are using laptop, arrow key back and FN button. So FN, arrow key back. You can do the very same operation here in Notch UI. Just use this icon right here, jump to start.